When you think of Isaac Okoro, what comes to mind? Stellar defense on the point of attack, exciting play out in transition, burgeoning floor spacing? When I picture Okoro, I envision all of these things. One word that is rarely used, if at all, to describe the young man is playmaker. I mean, yeah, he's always seemed to have a knack for making the extra pass, but rarely was he called upon or put in a position to be an orchestrator of the offense. I attribute this to the way that J.B. Bickerstaff and company often utilize him. It's not out of the ordinary to see Okora waiting in the quarters while the team is in the half-court offense, especially when one of Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell are out there on the floor. It's also quite commonplace to see Okora thrive in transition as both a finisher and connective tissue. What isn't so common though is for the team to put the ball in the Auburn product's hands and ask him to create for others and due to the fact that he plays alongside so many capable ball handlers, it's honestly understandable. But with that being said, more playmaking is always a welcome sight, especially coming from a player whose skill set isn't always appreciated. Seeing Okoro set his teammates up for good looks should make any Cavs fan smile considering the work that he has put in to render himself an invaluable piece of this Cavs rotation. His play dating back to his days at Auburn hinted at the possibility of this becoming the case as many scouts spoke of his ability to drive and kick, his unselfishness as well as his willingness to create ahead of the draft and it was definitely there. Take a look. In the clock, looks like Okoro versus Manaya. Great penetration pitch to the hot hand. And it is red hot. Kick. To establish their tempo. Isaac Okoro again off the bounce. And let's not be coy here, we saw flashes at the NBA level early as well, starting his rookie season where he could be seen making the very same type of drive and kick passes that he had become accustomed to at Auburn, finding the open three point shooters. One were within four feet, only five shots last season from outside of four feet is awesome. Pockets a corner jumper. Okoro knocks down Plumley. we play on Osmond from the corner. Hey, good look. Down. Good look by the rookie. The flashes were sporadic, but he did just enough to make you feel like he could become a decent playmaker. With his best stretch in that regard coming during a three game span from May 10th through 14th of the 2020 2021 season, where he averaged five assists. He was patient, waited for plays to develop, and kicked it out when necessary. He is particularly dangerous when he is coming off of a screen. Notice how quickly he is able to identify the open man and immediately move the ball. Already looking at being the aggressive out there because that was a forced. Taylor made his second All Star appearance and his first start in the All Star game this season. As Allen to the bucket, he lays it up and in. Allen down low with Thompson. Likes to shovel back to Okoro. Once more to Allen and he lays it in. Nice two man game that time. Super pass by Okoro. You could definitely see it in years two and three as well, but still sporadically because of how he was being used in the lineups he was part of. The only difference was that his handle seems to have improved a bit each and every season. He isn't Kyrie Irving, but he's become less and less prone to dribbling the ball off of his foot or committing the avoidable turnover. The swing passes are becoming more and more prevalent as well, as Akura has become adept at moving the ball to the open man. Got a change here to start the third quarter. Dorian Finney-Smith gets the start. Struess, jumper is good. Just pick it up where it Mitchell cross court, extra pass, Struess, another one, another one. Cavs getting some valuable minutes from Craig Porter and Dean Wade. This has been a good, good opportunity these last three games to get some reps for these guys. Wade fires the contestant. The more the Cavs have allowed him to operate as the primary ball hander, the more he has shown his vision. He is making the correct reads and it shows as he has the highest assist percentage of his career at 11.3% as well as the highest assist to usage rate at 0.90, which happens to rank within the 89th percentile among forwards. Of course, much of this coincides with the absences of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. This has caused J.B. Bickerstaff to lean on Okora more and more as a creator, and I really hope that as the team slowly returns to a semblance of full strength that they continue to give him opportunities to do so because he can clearly impact the game in this regard. And look, I know what I'm about to say might sound crazy, but hear me out. I think that this is helping Okora's confidence in general, and as a result, there has been a trickle-down effect in regards to other areas of his game, most notably his shooting. We've seen that confidence plays a role in his effectiveness as a shooter and honestly his willingness to fire away in general. 
it's almost as if getting him more involved has given him more belief in himself. Isaac has already dished out four or more assists in five games this season, and in those contests, he's shooting 41.2% from three-point distance on 3.4 attempts per game. Overall, I see the development that he has made as a facilitator, and I hope that the team elects to lean into it upon returning to full strength. Go Cavs!